Bike Express 2025 is a big upgrade which has got something for everyone. What I love most about the new features is that they transform the entire app because of the way they integrate everything. Let's get to it. The first thing you're going to see is an interface enhancement that gets more powerful the more you use it. It's this quick access bar right here which floats with what you're doing. You can pin it if you want and you can also switch it off, but don't do that yet. More usefully, you can tell it which features you want. When it doesn't have any of your chosen features for what you're doing, it disappears until you click something it can respond to. Let's look at that in depth. With everything turned on, when you're on a text box, it gives you font, weight, size, box color, box outline color, outline width, and import. Click on a picture, though, and you lose the text formatting features, but gain access to picture fitting, the image editing palette, and the picture links. If it's a grayscale image, you also get image coloring. With two items selected, you can group or ungroup, and if it's a vector graphic, you can convert to native objects. It's like a visual version of a contextual menu, which you can still access as before with control click on a Mac or right click on a PC. I know that someone's already thinking, I like the way the interface was, I don't need this. Fine, you can turn it off, but the ability to turn it on only with what you want is more powerful than you might first think. I find a lot of times with most applications that I'm repeatedly clicking something. It's not regular enough to write an Apple script or JavaScript or to use a fine change, but the annoyance and the little movements of having to go up to the menus again and again or a complicated key combination build up pretty quickly. You can also reorder how things appear. It's a clever addition and you get used to it very quickly. The feature that really caught my attention when I first started playing with this was style groups. Being able to group styles seems a useful but not earth-changing addition. There's a little icon to allow you to create a group and you can then drag styles in there or indeed duplicate the group. So what, you might be thinking, well, there's another icon here. What does it do? Bang, absolutely right. We just changed all the styles in the layout. You can have as many groups as you want, highly useful for when you're working up different designs for a document for a client or preparing different editions of a book. But there's more. Even if the names aren't the same, as long as you've set the semantic headings and the paragraph styles, it'll follow those. This becomes really interesting when you want a document for ebook and for web because the semantic headings apply across different media. I used to do output from a database in Express Tags, but this one is ridiculously easy. Anyone can learn how to do headings and markup language in about five minutes, and it's a standard that lots of people already use. As long as your style sheets have semantic headings, Quark will locate these in the markup text and apply them, deleting the markers. You can format entire books in this way, then change the formatting to a different set of style sheets if you want. Let's go on to colours. One of the things that have helped two generations of designers produce consistent colour is the Quark swatch system. But don't you sometimes want to just play with colour or even have localised colours just because they look right? Now, you can. The localised colour palette lets you make new colours and have them appear on screen as you do it. It's nice to play with, but the real power comes when you move off RGB, CMYK and HSB to lab colour. Lab, L-A-B, is an extremely powerful colour model that's hard to explain, but once you start playing with it, it's superb for coming up with colour combinations. It works in three dimensions, lightness A and B, which will be hard to manage, so Quark Express lets you choose which two are to have on the area and which on the slider. Lab mimics the way your eyes work better than any other model. You can pick colours from a photograph or anything else on the page, and you can also enter HTML values. As a bonus, if you pick from something which has an HTML value, it will tell you what it is. You can leave it as a local colour or convert it to a swatch. While we're on this, something else you'll like is the ability to manage the curvature of boxes on screen. You can shift click to change the type of corner. This might not immediately seem particularly useful until you start to see how different elements interact. 
Let's take a dotted line, for example. Without the on-screen control, you'd spend a long time messing with the measurements palette to get this exactly right. Now start playing with the border width, courtesy of the quick access bar, and things become much more interactive. On-screen spell checking. You might think it was high time that this was a Quark Express feature, but there's a school of thought that says a DTP application shouldn't have a spell checker at all. When you're preparing the final version of a publication, you don't want to suddenly start editing. Be that as it may, the Quark Express implementation is substantially better than most. Let's click on a misspelt word. Quark makes better suggestions than most applications, and it organises them into the main words and subsidiary words. You can choose to add to dictionary or ignore all, and it's fully integrated with the document spell checker. If you don't want it, you can turn it off in the settings. But even if you don't intend to edit spelling, the live spell checker gives you more information than you might think. Right now, I'm working on a very long, very famous document in a new translation into Dutch. On one of the rounds of revisions, all the hyphenations were wrong. For some reason, I was on English, not Dutch hyphenation. Now, imagine I'm working in six languages, including Ukrainian, which I can't read at all. What you should do, in fact must do, is set the character style to the correct language. But there's no obvious on-screen way to know you've done this. Or at least, there wasn't. In this section of text, I've set the languages correctly. If I don't, it will immediately flag up pretty much every word. I'm not going to start picking alternative spellings in Ukrainian, but I'm thrilled to have it confirmed that I've picked the right language. A couple of other things. Do all these features work everywhere? Yes, even when creating flex documents for the web. Local colour, on-screen spelling, it's all there. What else is new? You can now import a page from another Quark Express document. Want to know what's even cooler? Editing it opens the document itself in Quark. This way you can nest and interlink documents. The font system has been overhauled, important given some of the issues new operating system versions have been creating. As a spin-off effect, at least on my computer, the story editor is dramatically faster to load. I stopped using it because it was too slow. Now it's easy. Automatic hyperlinks have been enhanced to include other protocols such as Mail2. And you can now export IDML packages, preserving everything, including doc document fonts. And now one more thing. With all the Google fonts and everything else we get to play with, it's getting harder to manage your brand fonts. Are we using Adobe Garamond, ITC Garamond, Cormorant Garamond, EB Garamond, Simoncini Garamond, Numbered Garamond, or URW Garamond? If you work with several brands, this gets more and more confusing. Getting it wrong, we all know this, can produce results which gradually destroy credibility by being not quite right. The font palette has been improved in a couple of ways, but the most important one is font groups. As well as favouriting fonts, you can now put them into groups and then display only the fonts in your group. For speed, simplicity and preventing errors, this is a feature which again seems simple and obvious, but will pay dividends again and again. Let's recap. The on-screen controls, the quick access bar, local colours and the box shaping tool. You can now work on the document much more directly than before. Style groups open doors for automating extensive text and also allow you to work up several different layouts, either to show a client, to use in your creative process, or because you're producing differing versions of the same text. The on-screen spelling checker is more powerful than most, and it crucially assures you that you have the right language set. That's important for hyphenation and also for correct markup of documents for the web and ebooks. Font groups put power previously reserved for external font managers into your workflow. And then there's IDML packages, a revamped font system, and my favourite of the minor upgrades, the ability to import a Quark page. All of these work at a deep level throughout the system. We all know that productivity is creativity, and creativity is productivity. The faster you can work, the more time you have to think creatively. The more you're able to work creatively, the faster your progress to the final result. Mm -hmm.